Recently, Unity has officially released its 2D game development tool called Unity Playground. By the help of this tool, you can make 2D physics-based game very easily without typing a single line of code. Unity Playground has a collection of pre-made scripts which can be used for various functions like player movement, collect items, spawn and destroy objects, and for some other complex conditions. It provides you a simplified inspector window with only the options which are necessary to make a 2D game. Overall, it's a very simple and easy to use framework for beginners, teachers, and game designers who want a more simplified version of Unity. In this video, we will learn about Unity Playground's features and how we can use them to make a 2D game. And we will also recreate a simple 2D adventure game from scratch which is included in this package so that you can have a good understanding of it. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, importing Unity Playground is very easy. Just go Windows, SS Store and type Unity Playground and download from here and make sure to import in an empty Unity project. In this package, there are 6 different types of small 2D games which you can use to learn more about how to use this framework. It also has a collection of 2D sprites for background, character, props, trees and some particle effects. And finally, here is the list of pre-made scripts to make a game with cool icons. We will explore some of these scripts throughout this video. All these scripts have a short description about its functionality. You can also use these cheat sheet images to know more about this script. You can also turn on and off anytime this playground framework if you want to use default inspector window. Next, I open this adventure game by double click on it. In this game, you need to pick up all the stars without hitting these bee enemies. If you collide with bees more than 3 times, then your game will be over. So without going into each element of this demo, let's make it from scratch in another scene so that you can easily understand how all these games are made. First of all, go to file, make a new scene and save it as adventure demo. Next, select the main camera and set the project size to 6 to match the game area with the example. After that, we need this background for our game which is made of tile maps. To make a new tile map, just right click 2D object and click on tile map. This will make a new layer of tile map. If you want to know more about tile maps, please visit Unity's official YouTube channel. I will give a link in the description. Next, set the cell size to 2x2 so that we have enough area for our player to move around. Select our tile map layer and you will notice that in our scene view, the grid lines are much more visible. Which means you can place different types of tile in each grid boxes. I will explain this in a second. Next go to Windows, 2D and click on this tile palette. And luckily it already has a tile palette which was used in the adventure example. Next, without going any detail, just select this rectangle tool and choose this tile and click and drag to fill a large area with grass tiles. I am also painting some different tiles to get a nice variation in the grass. You can also remove the tile by holding the shift key. Next, I paint some rock tile for pathways. Actually, I am not a designer so please ignore my awful level designing skills. You must be thinking that even though these tiles are looking black and white here, but why these are looking colorful in the scene? If you go to this tile folder inside the adventure folder, you will see all the tiles used in this palette. And you can change its color from here which will apply to all the tiles in the scene. Pretty handy. And suddenly you will notice that our tile palette is now become colorful again. It may be a bug or something but now you know how to fix it. Next, let's add some walls to limit the player movement in the scene. For that, go to images, building and drag and drop this wall sprite in the scene. Right now you can't see the sprite because it is behind this background grid. To fix that, go to tile map and set the order in layer to negative 5 or lower. Now our wall sprite is visible. Now you can copy and paste this sprite to complete the border but I want to show you a quick way to do it. Go to sprite render component of this sprite and change this draw mode to tiled and increase this width and you will get a full border in just one sprite. Cool. And add a box collider 2D to restrict the player going through it. Duplicate this sprite and make the other 3 walls. Next we need a structure in the center of this area where we will place our collectible items. For that go to block and choose this stone tile. You can choose other tiles if you want. This time increase the height by increasing this y value and add a box collider 2D to complete the structure. Let me finish this design in fast forward mode. Next to organize the scene, I make an empty game object by right click and select create empty and reset the transform by clicking on this 0 and 1 button. Next select all the wall objects and drag onto this empty game object and shrink these objects. Let's add some plant from this nature asset folder. 
drag and drop this tree into the hierarchy. First set the scale to 0.5 and 0.5 and add a circle collider 2D at the bottom of this tree to prevent player going through it. Decrease the radius of this collider but now the question is how do we move this collider at the bottom. If you click on this extra option button then you will find some other parameter of this component which are hidden by default. Now you can change this offset value to move the collider to the bottom. Next copy and paste a few more copies of this tree around in the scene. Also add some other trees and plant for variation. Again make an empty game object and make this tree objects children of it. Our environment is now ready. Before going further please save your scene. Now let's add our player and add some functionality to it. For the player this package has some pre-made character prefab which you can drag and drop in your game. The beauty of this character is that they are fully customizable. There is a great list of artwork to choose from and make the character you want. Feel free to play with these sprites and make your own character designs. For a quick demo you can either modify the existing character or go inside character bodies folder and drop this character body sprite in the scene and add different types of eyes, hairs, mouth and hats to give it a look you want. You may need to adjust this order in layer option to place the element in the front and back of the character. After designing the character, first I set its scale to 0.5 and 0.5 to make it smaller. Next to add movement, first select our character, then go to script, movement and drag and drop this movie script in the inspector panel. It will ask you to apply the script to its prefab instead of this copy of prefab, which I don't want because then it will apply all the changes to every copy of this character in this whole project. For now I cancel this window and right click and select unpack prefab completely. This will make this object completely independent. And now you can drag and drop this movie script to this object. Without changing any of this parameter, just hit play and test if it is working or not. And our character just fell down in the scene. Let's fix it by changing these parameters. First set the tag to player which is necessary because in the playground objects are recognized by their tags. Next set the order in layer to 0. In the move script I want WASD to move my character in all directions. In rich body 2D since our character will not jump so set this gravity to 0. Set the friction to 5 and freeze the rotation along the z axis. Finally add a 2D polygon collider so that it can collide with other objects. Let's test our character movement. And you can see our character movement is done in less than 2 minutes. Next we want our camera to follow the character. So to add that select the camera and add camera follow script onto it. Notice there is a clear description saying that it is used to follow the player. We just need to select our player in the target. And there you go, our camera is now following our player. It's really very fast. One problem you will notice that the area outside the background is also visible in our camera. To fix this issue, go back to the camera follow script and select use bound and adjust the limit to our background. And now our camera is perfectly following the character. Cool. Next, let's add some enemies. For the enemies, go to images, creature and drag and drop this B sprite in the hierarchy. You can also change the size of 3D icons if you find these script icons annoying. First set the scale to 0.5 and 0.5. Next add a circle collider to it and adjust the radius. Next to add a hovering animation to the B, go to movement and attach this wander script to the B. Set the speed to 10 and direction change interval to 0.5. Keep it near starting point. In the rigid body set the friction to 3, gravity to 0 and freeze the rotation along the Z axis. Ok, now our B is hovering perfectly. But when we collide with it, it is not damaging our character. Adding damaging function is also very very easy. Just go to scripts, attributes and add this modify health script to it. In the health, negative value means damage and positive value means heal. So for the damage, I keep it negative 1. To receive this damage on the player, go to player and add this health system attribute. Here you can define the initial health of the player. For now, I set it to 5. And finally, to see the health on the screen, go to prefab and just drag this user interface prefab in the hierarchy. And there you go. You can see it is showing the initial health which is 5. And when I collide with this enemy, my health is also reducing. And finally when the health is 0, the game is automatically over. I have to admit that they made it extremely easy and very very fast. Ok, in the last we need to add some collectible items in the game because there is no game without reward. So for that, go to game element folder and drag and drop this star sprite in the scene. To make it collectible item, Add a 2D polygon collider and then go to script attribute and add this collectible attribute to this star and set the collider to is trigger. And also in the user interface set the score to win to 3. Ok that's it. You can see the score is automatically increasing when we collide with these items and when we have 3 items our level is automatically complete. So there you have it. That's how you can make any kind of simple 2D game in Unity playground without any coding knowledge.
I suggest you to check out other example as well to know more about this playground setup. I am also planning to make a basic 2D platformer game to explain some complex features of this tool. If you want it, please let me know in the comments. And finally, if you like my channel, please support me on Patreon. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe it and press the bell icon for more updates. Till then, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys liked it. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.